Let us look at isotopic composition of molecules. To start with, we have elements that are monoisotopic, having only one isotope, fluorine, sodium, phosphorus, iodine. Hydrogen has around one hundredth of percent of deuterium, which can be important when you have molecules of very high molecular weight and very high number of hydrogens. Beryllium, aluminum, cobalt, arsenic, cesium, gold are other monoisotopic elements, but they are rather exotic. Several elements has isotope with the mass number higher by one. Most important of them are carbon and nitrogen. Carbon has 1.1 percent of carbon-13 and nitrogen, which is 14, has 0.37 percent of nitrogen-15. These numbers are approximate. For example, carbon from different sources has different isotopic composition. Carbon dioxide atmospheric and atmospheric methane have very visible difference in isotopic composition. As a result, isotopic composition of any carbon-containing sample is individual. For example, food samples coming from different places on this planet have slightly different and detectable difference of isotopic composition. To say more, if you continuously live and stay at one continent, you have slightly different isotopic composition of carbon in your body than people living constantly and not moving and not eating food from different places of the world. This helped to identify sometimes uh, the origin of a person of question. Carbon-13 is visible when you have several carbons in a molecule. For example, benzene molecule has six carbon atoms, which means it has six 0.5% probability of having carbon-13. So 6.5% of benzene molecule will have exact, will have mass not of 78, but of 79. Now biphenyl has 12 molecules. 12 carbon atoms in a molecule, so probability of having carbon-13 is almost 13 percent, and this peak at M plus 1 is 13 percent high. This is a helpful observation. You can figure out number of carbons in your molecule just by looking at peak adjusting to the highest peak. There are several A minus one elements, but they were all of limited importance. They are boron, 25% of B10, and lithium, 8.1%. There are several a plus two elements, oxygen, silicon, sulfur, chlorine, and bromine.
oxygen has the visible admixture of oxygen 18, sulfur 4.5% of sulfur 34, and chlorine and bromine have lots of higher atomic mass isotope 32 and 97% respectively. 97% is almost 100%, so we can say that bromine has two isotopes with almost identical abundance. So when you see a peak with practically identical doublets separated by two mass units, it's almost certainly bromine. So again, mass number or nominal mass is integer mass of most abundant isotope. Isotopic mass is an exact mass of this isotope. We mostly use whole numbers because the resolution of our most common instruments will not allow us to measure exact mass. However, measuring exact mass is possible and very helpful. When you start figuring out what kind of molecule you have, we need some additional definitions. To start with, we have, of course, a very simple rule that nominal mass will be total number of protons and neutrons in our molecule. Next convenient count would be Our organic molecules always have mass being even number. It can be 44, it can be 46, it cannot be 45, unless you have nitrogen atom. So odd numbers in mass numbers appear only if you have odd numbers of nitrogen atoms in your molecule. If you have even number for mass number of your molecule, that means you have no nitrogens or even number of nitrogen atoms. Next convenient rule is rings plus double bonds in structure. When you have a formula of structure, you derive it, uh, number of rings plus double bonds, you cannot differentiate these two, is one plus number of carbons minus one half number of hydrogens plus one half number of nitrogens in your molecule. Number of oxygen, sulfur, does not matter. Uh, halogens, chlorine, bromine, iodine count as hydrogens. Okay, so some examples of how we can use isotopic composition to figure out composition of your molecule. Uh, looking at chlorine distribution, you have 32 of X plus 2 peak. Then if you have two chlorine atoms in your molecule, the distribution will be like this. You'll have 64% for X plus 2 and 
uh, visible intensity here around 10% for X plus 4. If you have three chlorine atoms, you'll have 96% for X plus 2, uh, 30 something for X plus 4, and visible for X plus 6. If you have one bromine atom, you have almost identical intensity for two peaks separated by two atomic units. If you have two bromines, you have triplet with central peak twice more intense than two satellites. When you have three bromines, you have two satellites of one third and two major peaks of almost identical high. Uh, then you, when you have combination of bromine and chlorine, you have a different pattern and you can figure it out if you compare your spectrum with this picture. Carbon atoms. If you have five carbons, your satellite peak at plus one will be small one at 5% intensity at 20. It will be above 20% intensity. At 60, see 60, 60 carbon atoms in your molecule, you'll have a strong peak at plus one with 60% intensity of the first and appreciable intensity at plus two and plus three. When we are going to 90, you'll have almost doublet. With 120, uh, the highest peak will be even higher than your theoretical mass number. Just because you have highest probability of having at least one carbon-13 atom in your molecule. Uh, we can calculate it, all this using simple algebra like this. I'm not going to go over these formulas in detail, but it's all doable. So probability of first, probability of second, two, three, four, and more of them. And uh, uh, these calculations are done here, the simple formulas. So if you know number of atoms of hydrogen, you have peak intensity here, um, you need hundreds of hydrogens to see something. Uh, but uh, for carbon, it's easier. Uh, for silicon, a couple of silicons will bring you very intensive peak at x plus 1 and reasonably intensive at x plus 2. Again, we have formula for all of them. Keep in mind for monoisotopics like iodine or sodium you, or fluorine like that or phosphorus, and you will see no satellite peaks at all. So when we have molecule like this, instead of one peak, we'll have plenty. So this is a, a molecule that has three chlorines, uh, three nitrogens, and nine carbons. So you'll have peak corresponding to smallest mass, so carbon-12, all chlorines are chlorine 35 and another peak that will correspond to chlorine 37 at almost the same intensity you see 255 and 257 are almost the same intensity then there is lower intensity here and we have carbon 13 picture coming from the fact that we have nine carbons, so 10% intensity peak here and there. These and these are corresponding to each other. 
Another example of a sulfur. So we have one peak corresponding to sulfur 32 and uh, carbon 13 and then uh, uh, we have another peak corresponding to sulfur 34 here. This is kind of fingerprint of this molecule. We can look at uh, this trichloromethane spectrum. Uh, the molecular peak is almost invisible. Uh, it's of low intensity. Uh, but here we can see two chlorine atoms. So the pattern one, two, and three, three peaks that correspond to two chlorine atoms. And we can see some satellite peaks here. So fragment with uh, CHCl2 is visible. And uh, we can try to decipher uh, what had happened looking at from here. 